Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in the Resolved series and I have brought forward to you a topic that is generally not touched upon in textbooks about the actual definition of electric dipole moment. Is it actually valid for systems where net charge of the system is not zero? And we'll also top it off with a cute little mechanical analogy which carries similar calculation from rotational mechanics. And at the end of this video, we'll top it off with another practice problem that tests your understanding of what we are going to deal with in this video. And as a bonus, what we are going to do is our next video will be the video solution of the practice problem so it is a double bonanza and lots to look forward to so i'm pretty excited i hope you are too so let's move forward right what are the things to be resolved in this particular video is electric dipole moment defined for the system of net charge not equal to zero as i told you in the thumbnail is electric dipole moment dependent on the choice of origin? Is the calculation of electric dipole moment for a system of charges dependent on origin choice? Okay. And when net charge is zero, right? So in a special case, when the net charge on the system is zero, how does electric field fall off at large distances? Is it a one by R square or one by R cube or one by R per four? We'll try to see those uh, situations. So we'll try to take an example and I'll leave it to the practice problem to test your understanding. So I hope uh, you have given it these questions a try in your mind. So let's go step by step. Before we move on to the explanation, so a humble request do like the video so that the channel and the videos get propagated and we get enough motivation and support to continue the channel. So I have been requesting uh, this from the last few videos. Uh, targets have not been reached. I'm trying my best to keep the channel alive. Okay. So I request you all in this particular support. Okay. So a lot of things on the board, as I keep saying every time, just don't read things on your own. Uh, try to follow my voice and also where I'm pointing. And within uh, uh, some time with enough patience from your side, you'll be able to understand this important concept. So we are trying to write potential due to a system of charges. Imagine this dotted line in the left side of the screen corresponds to a system boundary of n number of charges. So Q1, Q2, Q3 up till Qn. And the dimensions of that system is of length L, a characteristic length L. And at a very far away distance, at a point P somewhere here, at a distance R from the origin O, you are supposed to find the potential. Let's suppose this is our uh, uh, effort. Okay. Now, each and every point charge here will have its own position vector to this point P, target point P. And our job to write that potential would be equal to K being 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught throughout carried out. Uh, sum of each contribution. So if this is QI here, uh, you have to divide it with the modulus of this vector subtraction. So what is this vector subtraction? It is R bar minus r i bar r i bar is the position vector of q i with respect to the origin that's what i have written here and also we all, we know that the r bar can be written as the magnitude of the distance r multiplied by e r cap vector now there's a radial unit vector that we will substitute in the later calculations now for the dimensions of the system l being very small compared to r so this would be a condition for a general situation where r could be even smaller but if by chance the dimensions of the system is very small compared to R, R, you can say this R is a very large distance from the system. We can make some approximations here. That approximation is the idea that this R minus R I bar vector, right? This vector, once, once this triangle has this size very small, then this one almost coincides with this one. Only difference being that R minus R I could either lie on this side of this point or on this side. Okay. But you could say that in this triangle, if this side is very small, this is almost equivalent to this. Okay. With a small difference, that difference would be equal to the length of this thing. Okay. Right. So that's what I have written. The modulus of R minus R I is approximately equal to the magnitude of R plus or man, minus the value of Ri. That plus or minus Ri would be nothing but the dot product of Er. So if Ri is on this side, it would be a negative value. And if Ri is on this side, it would be a positive value. So the sign of this plus or minus is de decided by this dot product, okay? So keep that one substituted here. And for large distances, this will come out to be this number. I took the R out. 
and then I wrote it as one minus this dot product divided by R. Now this thing, one divided by one minus a very small quantity. Remember, this R is very large and this R is uh, dot ERs are very small numbers. So this magnitude is very small compared to one. So one by one minus X binomially can be written as one plus X plus X square plus X cube, so on and so forth. You have higher terms here. So when you take this QI by R inside and write them in uh, number of terms, there'll be some of different terms. So first term would be this number, sigma QI by R. The second term, which is important for our discussion in this video, would be sigma QI RI. What I did is I took this QI and multiplied it with this array. This is a scalar multiplied with vector, which I made it in this format. And remember, ER cap is a general direction for all different Q1, Q2, Q1 up till QN. This ER vector is a constant vector. So I brought it out of that sigma. OK, so I'll define this numerator, yellow color numerator summation as a dipole moment. OK, apart from that, there will be higher order terms, which we'll discuss later in the next video. OK, so we are only interested in these two terms at this particular point in the video. So this second term, sigma QI RI bar is a vector. Please remember, it is the sum, uh, summation of product of the charge, which is scalar multiplied by the position vector of that charge with respect to the chosen origin. So this quantity right now is not just dependent on the charges, but also the choice of origin. All these vectors would be dependent on how the origin is taken. It's called the dipole electric moment or electric dipole moment P bar of the system. Now I have nowhere in this particular discussion talked about sum of charges being zero. So dipole moment is actually defined even for a system where the net charge is not zero. You can have a non-neutral system for which electric dipole moment can be defined. It is origin dependent in general, except when the first term that sigma QI becomes zero. I'll prove it in the next step. OK, so whenever some of the charges is zero, this quantity becomes origin independent. It will not depend on where you choose this O, which is interesting. So let's move forward. Ah, right. So here I brought that uh, expression from the previous page. So this this whole expression, I'm copying it to the next page so that we can uh, cover it up and this higher order terms I'll discuss it in the next video as I dis uh, talked about so these two terms will decide the potential at a far away distance for a system of charges okay so if I'm writing the dipole moment as this sigma qi ra bar with respect to the origin o here then I if I define a new origin here that you can see at the bottom right of your screen o prime let's say is the new origin and I define a new R bar prime and also the position vector of this origin O prime with respect to O can be written as R O bar. So every R I bar here, I can start writing in terms of this R bar and R O bars. OK, so the new dipole moment vector should be defined as sigma of each charge multiplied by R prime I bars. Every new vector will have its own R prime I bars, which in turn can be written as R I bar minus R O. So this constant vector that you should just subtract. So you're shifting the origin from the original O to a new one. So this R I will get shifted to R I minus R O. Now you do the simple sigma here. The first term is nothing but this expression minus an extra term will come into account. So in general, this P bar and P will not be equal to each other because of this extra term. When can you have this uh, equality? When this bracket comes out to be zero. That is when P and P prime bar will become zero. So whenever sum of charges of a system are zero, X, for example, in case of a dipole, where plus Q and minus Q are separated by distance, then the dipole moment becomes origin independent. And until unless that happens, your uh, dipole moment is defined for general systems and it depends on origin. I've given you two examples of system, Q, Q and minus 2Q as one system forming an equilateral triangle. This is actually going to have a net charge zero. In this, P is origin independent. So whether you take origin here or here and do sigma QI RI, you will get same values for all the points. Whereas on the right hand side, you could see I have taken a similar looking system. Just I change this Q to minus Q. For this also P bar is defined. Don't say that sum of charges is non-zero and therefore dipole moment is not defined. It is defined. But problem with this is that you have to choose the origin and different origins here will give you different dipole moment. 
so why all this first why need do we need to define a dipole moment for the system will be revealed in the next slides okay right so you should have some reason for defining this thing and the, one of the reasons you will realize is that this particular expression i have come back to the previous slide this expression will give us uh, the idea of the potential at large distance points that is why we need uh, to define dipole moment just because it looks like a fancy sigma or fancy summation we don't define it just for the fun we don't define it because during the calculation for potential for a system of charges this expression showed up that's why we define or name any physical quantity in physics because of its importance okay so let's try to see that for dipole moment of a dipole is a special case dipole is a plus q and a minus q separated with a distance t so you choose any origin anywhere the answer for the dipole moment the sigma q i r i when you do it will have only two terms will come out to be simply q into the displacement or the uh, line joining the two uh, negative and positive charges and that is a, a, a example or a, a, you could say a special case okay it's not a general case right so this should not be used as the definition of dipole moment every time you can define electric dipole moment for a non zero charge systems also okay so that was the whole point of this video now mechanical analogy with the torque right even in torque calculations right for a system of uh, forces on a on a uh, complete rigid body if there are multiple forces acting on it uh, there could be two cases either sum of all forces is non zero that means net force is non zero or net force is zero okay i have taken a simplistic example of only two forces acting you can extend this to multiple forces acting please understand this so on the left side of your figure you have a rod on which two forces are acting in the same direction that means net force is not zero now if i choose two different points o and o prime and i try to calculate torque of these forces about o first calculation and about o prime you will get a different answer okay so if the forces sum is not zero you can check it out by writing the sigma and r cross f and everything torque will be dependent on the origin or the point about which you take the torque whereas in the special case of force being equal and opposite and that means the net force is zero you try to calculate torque about this or about this or about this any point or outside the screen right now you'll end up getting the same value of f into the line joining the two forces similar to q into d being the dipole moment in the previous slide f into d will become the couple star and that's why this is called couple and uh, it, it, the analogy is that in that topic it is the dipoles dipole moment which is independent here the torque of a couple is independent okay that's the whole idea that i wanted to propagate okay so let's move on to, to the importance of defining dipole moment let's let me reiterate again i copied that term okay as you could see in systems where the sigma qi term is zero that means the net charge of a system is zero right which is very important in chemistry uh, situations where a compound is about to react and some of the charges on the compound is zero but you still have a potential and a field developed by that compound and it, it helps you understand the reaction mechanism especially in organic chemistry where uh, the field as at, for, for a distance r from that particular compound how it falls off decides the reaction mechanism okay so so if this term becomes zero then this term takes its importance in deciding the potential so for a simple dipole remember for a simple dipole if sigma qi is zero and this term is not zero the potential falls off as one by r square and therefore field falls off as one by r cube for a dipole a simple looking dipole system if you uh, can carefully observe something like this let me show that yeah so for a dipole plus and minus q okay so if i stop it here right now the distance between the two charges is substantial enough and you have a field which is not that great looking okay you still have a field so if i let this distance to be very small between the two charges plus and minus q then any distance away from it you can consider it to be a large distance so let me allow the point charges to almost merge into each other yeah here here okay right so this is like almost a point dipole so every point somewhere here is a large distance point and the field map that you are right now seeing if you move along one particular direction in that direction for a distance r the field falls off as 1 by r cube or you move in this direction right once you define first of all you have to define a direction in that direction if i move to distance r1 and then move to r2 
the R1 to R2 fields will be proportional to 1 by R1 cube and 1 by R2 cube. That's the whole idea that we were trying to talk about. What if a system, uh, some of the charges is zero, but you also have this term equal to zero. This term is anyway zero. So that is the bonus point that would be discussed in the higher, uh, uh, the next video. Idea is when both the terms, that is sigma qi is zero and also this p bar term is zero, then it's obvious that this V will decide, decide will be decided by higher order terms. You should not say answer is zero, but you will be deciding it with the higher order terms. Just to give you an example, this is the uh, simple example of a system of charges where net charge is zero and you could see dipole moment sigma qara is also zero here one dipole moment is this way and one dipole moment so at a very far away distance r on this particular point there are some higher order terms in the calculation which will decide how the field and potential will fall off and that's the whole point of our next video or in the practice problem that we are going to take okay so before i show up the practice problem let me just educate you about the way i can uh, be approached or you can connect with me on the different uh, social medias and discord server telegram group and website telegram group uh, contains a lot of doubts getting solved and and all those things and website also this is the landing page of the website of physicsurgy.in. Okay, all the playlists and videos of this chapter wise topics are arranged in a particular manner, which ensures faster revision for the students. So you should go and check it. And in case you want to uh, have a look of how to use this website, I've made a video. The link of that video is in the description below or the I button above. You can check it out. And also uh, the practice problem that I was always talking about throughout this video, it is from uh, the NCRT exemplar problem. So it is very, very famous one. I, uh, I have a contention here, the solution or the key given in this particular problem is wrong in the book. And also the same wrong solution has been propagated in uh, multiple sources of solutions for this problem. So read this question carefully. Try to apply the concept that I have taught in this video and try to choose your answer and check and try to see what's the issue with that. Comment your answer uh, along with the timestamp below. I'll try to respond. I'll immediately come up with the solution of this in the NCRT physics in-depth doubts section, okay, right, or the series. Uh, you can check the rest of the in-depth doubts that I have discussed from NCRT. Uh, playlist of this particular thing is in the description below or the i button above okay so i'm expecting some good response for this particular question uh, and uh, and also in that particular video we will try to solve some more important practice problems to debunk the myth or the wrongness of this particular solution okay so I hope you are going to join me there and also rest for the rest of the electrostatics subtopic playlist uh, that you can follow and revise your concepts. Uh, all of them are arranged in a sequential manner in the description below. Please try to explore them. And regarding the Discord server, if you have any doubts, I made a tutorial video on how to use the Discord server. So please do watch that video tutorial. The link of it is in the description or the I button above. And apart from the result series, there are multiple series that are running in this channel, which keep helping the students. So I have written only four of them here. Many more are there. Try to see the description, try to explore, go to the playlist of the channel uh, section, and then you can explore from there also. If you're a new student, I would expect you to uh, see three or four videos per day to cover up the 260 plus videos that I've uploaded by now. And that should give you an edge in your preparation. And also, if you're just a physics lover, you will enjoy the way I present the concept and the subject okay so and uh, one more reminder please do make sure that you like the video uh, sharing you can do at your discretion and a subscription to this channel once you watch few videos uh, i'll leave it to your good judgment on whether to subscribe or not thanks for staying this long and see you in the next important video